topic is an ankle fracture. I have no disclosure. Uh, ankle fracture is uh, maybe the first and the second most common uh, fracture in humans among all age group. Uh, if you look into only the adult type, it can be the most common fracture. But in the elderly patient, the hip fracture may be more commonly than the ankle fracture. Mechanism of injury can be a low energy trauma such as a simple fall or twisting ankle or the high energy trauma such as a car accident or motorcycle accident. So this factor usually occur in the female uh, more than uh, 50 years old and also obesity patients. Uh, the first thing I'd like you to know is the surface anatomy of the ankle. Uh, when you look uh, ankle from the front, uh, the most medial part, the prominent here, so this is the uh, surface anatomy of the medial malleolus. The next tendon that you can see uh, a bulky right here is the tibialis anterior tendons. And if you go mm, the last one, uh, tendon that's prominent on the outside part of the ankle, we call peroneus tertius. And the last bony prominent on the outside part of the ankle, we call the fibula. Okay, fibula here is being represent uh, this part. And the medial malle malleolus right here represent the medial mal, okay, right here. Okay, then and we look into uh, uh, surface anatomy from the back. Uh, the most medial part is the medial malleolus, how it looks uh, like this, okay, here, right, medial malleolus. And uh, that's the biggest tendon in the human body is uh, located in the center part, so we call Achilles uh, tendon. You can see the medial border and also the lateral border of the Achilles uh, tendon right here. And the outside part of the bony prominence is the head of the fibula, you can see here on the right hand side uh, x-ray. Uh, for the recommend uh, around the ankle, as I mentioned in the ankle sprain, uh, you guys understand uh, uh, a lot about the lateral ankle uh, ligament. But this one, they have another group of the ligament. It's uh, slightly above the ankle joint. So we call it syndesmosis. So uh, if you look into my pointer right here, you can see the tip of the fibula. You have uh, a group of the ligament attached from the tip fibula obliquely uh, to the distal parts of the tibia. So uh, we call this uh, syndesmosis. They have three uh, components, the lower part, middle part, and the superior part. And i just like you to know, uh, we call a group of them as syndesmosis. The function is try to uh, maintain uh, the distal fibula to the distal tibia, uh, and they try to keep this bone together when the syndesmosis is torn. So they have no ligament to holding the distal tibia and the distal fibula together. So this can cause pain and also arthritic change in long term if you have syndesmotic injury and not have adequate treatment. So uh, for the grouping injury on the ankle, so uh, for the bony fracture, we can grouping them in uh, fibula fracture, uh, medial malleolus fracture, posterior malleolus fracture is a combination between uh, fibula and medial mal and medial mal and posterior mal. Uh, if the bone occur only one, we call isolated uh, fibula fracture or isolated medial malleolus fracture or isolated posterior malleolus fracture. But if you have two of uh, three, we can call bimalleolus fracture. But if all of these fracture, we can call tri uh, fractures. Uh, for the bony fracture, it can occur uh, by itself or it can be combined with the ligament injury, which is a ligament I uh, usually mention in the last lecture is the uh, lateral ligament and also the syndesmosis which is I already mentioned a couple of minutes ago and also the deltoid ligament injury which is on the medial side of the ankle. Uh, the injury can be combined between the bony and the ligamentous injury. So uh, for the first one we call a fibula fracture so you can look into the x-ray on the right hand side columns. So you can see here so it's the fibula. So when we look into the fracture, we usually follow the cortex. You can see from the above and following here, go down to the uh, fibula head and go down to the middle part. And you can see all connect and no breakage, no gap uh, between the cortex. On the middle picture, when you look into follow here from the tip of the fibula, go outside and go along the cortex. And you can see uh, there are breakage right here. And also they have some displacement of the fracture of the distal fibula as well as this one you can see following the cortex and you can see the disruption of cortex right here. So another one because the medial malleolus fractures uh, with medial mouse is uh, located on the middle part of the uh, ankle. 
if it's fractured you will see a lot of swelling uh, over uh, in this uh, area and when we look into the medial malleolus uh, from the inner part you can see the cortex was uh, intact along the medial uh, malleolus until the top part but on the right hand side picture you can see uh, there are some uh, stepping and breakage of the cortex from here to there and a lot of gap here so this can diagnose with the medial malleolus fracture and the last one uh, we call posterior malleolus fracture uh, we call the posterior part of the distal tibia is the posterior malleolus. You can see this is a joint uh, of the distal articular surface. Uh, when you look uh, to the back, you see the cortex was all contact intact until the top part. Uh, when you look into the right hand side picture, you see the teledome here, and you can see they have some stepping here. And when we go along the posterior part of the malleolus, you can see there the cortex was breaked right here, and here's a fracture line. Okay, on the right hand side columns, uh, you can see they are similar to the fracture on the left hand side, but you will see another thing they have uh, a lot of uh, migration or upward displacement of the bony fracture go to the uh, superior part and they have uh, inter articular stepping and also they tell us slightly subluxation on the posterior part. And there's a 3D uh, CT scan demonstrate uh, the posterior malleolus fracture in this picture. Uh, they also have uh, some classification. Uh, which is I think is too deep for you guys. Uh, digital day they can help us to guide for the treatment in terms of a stab a stable or unstable of the posterior malleolus fracture uh, based on they involved in cistura or not. So uh, for a clumpic uh, fracture, as I mentioned earlier, if a fracture is only the fibula or the medial mal, we call isolated uh, fracture, which is usually uh, unstable, uh, uh, but in some uh, situation, you will see the combination of the broken bone in the middle part and also the lateral part we call bimalleolar fracture. Or if it's involved the posterior malleolus as the right hand side picture, uh, we call dry um, malleolar fracture. By and dry malleolar fracture, usually uh, we consider as a unstable fracture. Usually require uh, operative fixation, except the patient have uh, multiple comorbidity and the surgery can cause a fatal. So we may need to uh, go with a conservative treatment. Other than that, we should uh, fix all of this with the uh, conservative treatment. Here's an example of uh, uh, the fracture. So you can see on the right hand side here, you look into the medial malleolus, you can see what's uh, broken right here. And you see the fibula on the, on the middle part and you go along here. And you can see they have a spine over here and it's broken right there. And the middle picture as well, you can see the broken right here. And also they have stepping of the cortex right there. And on the posterior malleolus, you can see the, the, the broken uh, posterior malleolus was right here. So this case was dry uh, malleolus fracture. So you guys need to be pay attention on the how to diagnose this. I think that you are, uh, because you are a medical student and when you graduate, you're gonna work on the ER and you probably the first uh, uh, person who see the, this patient. So you need to immobilization them and send them to do x-ray and you need to uh, know how to make a correct uh, diagnosis. I'm not going to go into much on the classification. If you can do, that's a perfect. But if you cannot do, I'm okay with that. But you need to know this is a fracture. You cannot let the patient go back home and say nothing. So you need to tell them if they have a fracture or they don't have a fracture. Some cases that have questionable, you should be uh, make an appointment uh, tomorrow. And at least you can immobilization them or tell them to uh, non-weight bearing until they see the specialist on the next day. So uh, in terms of your inter uh, evaluation, I will ask you, you guys about how to make a correct uh, diagnosis by looking to the x-ray. So you need to understand this uh, uh, well, okay, in order to get the good score. So uh, for the classification, uh, there are two common classification that has been used in Thailand. So the first one we call Weber classification. So this one we are uh, based on the location of syndesmosis. If the fracture was below the syndesmosis, we call uh, this uh, this sort of syndesmosis we call uh, Weber A. If the fracture was at the syndesmotic level, we call Weber B. But if the fracture above the syndesmosis, we call Weber C. So uh, here's an example of the x-ray. You can see here the syndesmotic level is just about right here. You can uh, draw the line from the ankle joint and go up about 3 cm. This is the location of the syndesmosis. And in this part, the A picture, you can see uh, the broken uh, below the syndesmosis is a Weber A. And in the uh, B picture, you can see the fractures uh, at the syndesmotic level. That's what we call uh, Weber B. And the uh, picture C, you can see the fractures above the syndesmosis. 
That's why we call Weber C. This is quite uh, easy for you. That you can uh, tell the resident or the staff that you see the patient and the fracture is where, which is located in uh, location ref uh, by refer to the syndesmosis that will help they understand where is the fracture site. And another classification we call Locke Hansen classification they are based on the mechanism of the injury. So they have two words. So the, uh, for example, on the uh, bottom line here, you can see the supination, external rotation. Uh, the, the first word usually present the position of the ankle and the sec second word usually represent the direction of the force during the ankle injury. So uh, they have a uh, uh, four system. Uh, a little bit too deep for you guys, but I just to show you here the supination external rotation. They have type one, type two, type three, type four. You can search online in this website. They have a very good videos and picture. You can go to YouTube and look into the video online, which is can tell you uh, a lot of detail and make you understand how the the ankle start to be broken at the first part at the ligament. Uh, okay, and and about go to the fibula and then go to the posterior malleolus okay and people are fracture and then go to the posterior malleolus fracture and then finally go to the medial malleolus fracture okay you can look into here online okay and the next thing will be a supination adduction which have a two type and uh, pronation external rotation have a four type and finally the pronation abduction have two type okay for classification may be a little bit too deep for you guys okay I want you to make a correct diagnosis. Uh, classification is be a little bit beyond for the five, fifth year medical student. And for the treatment, so if uh, isolated uh, fracture, as I mentioned earlier, usually a stable fracture, you can, uh, if it's displaced less than two millimeter and stable uh, medial side, so usually you measure the medial care space. If it's uh, less than four to five millimeter, we consider it to be stable. But if it's uh, widening on the medial care space, they're likely to be uh, a tight tree. Uh, but they show up like type 2 we call as um, supination external rotation type 4 equivalent of variance okay uh, a little bit too deep for you guys but you just make sure that uh, you know the fracture right here okay for the fibula fracture if it uh, requires surgery like this placement like right this uh, patient and you can see the medial care space was widening compared to the last x uh, picture I go back here you see that there's a small space uh, here but you can see the wider space right here Okay, it's uh, likely to be an uh, unstable fracture. For, for the fibula, we usually be perform the, the fixation by using a plate and uh, lax screw. Uh, we should go with lax screw, and for the press system, we go about six to seven hole, uh, based on the Lockwood uh, textbook. So nowadays, we prefer uh, seven holes, and uh, this power part, at least you get uh, uh, three cut, uh, three holes, and uh, proximal pass for three holes. For a uh, three hole on the distal part, right now they prefer to use a cal cancellar screw uh, later than the cortical screw. Uh, this is for the fixation of the fibula fracture. For the medial malleolus fracture, you can try a conservative treatment if it's non displaced uh, fracture uh, by a short leg cast or a cam walking boot uh, for six weeks and then following x ray until you see the callus formations. Uh, in some patients who have displacement, uh, uh, they want uh, to return to activity earlier so you can try the fixation by using multiple screw usually we go to a two screw uh, one at the anterior colliculus and, and the other one at the intercolliculus on the medial part of the uh, medial malleolus and the last one was a uh, posterior malle malleolus fracture if it's non displaced and small piece you can try a uh, conservative management but if it's a large piece involved more than 25 percent of the articular cartilage uh, sometimes it's associated with the uh, uh, displacement of the talus to the back. Uh, in this part, you may need to do uh, the surgical fixations. Uh, this is example of the case that you can see they are stepping uh, more than two millimeter, and they also uh, the displacement uh, of the fragment uh, to the back. And this fragment is quite large. You can see the total articular surface is involved around 40%, which is more than 25%, and slightly posterior subluxation of the talus. So in this case, they require uh, surgical fixations. And when we do, we should do a postural lateral approach to the back of the ankle, and you can fix this piece after you do a cross reduction. You can fix by a screw, uh, you can go by a plate and screw for fixations. So for take home message, so I, I want you guys to uh, understand uh, how important of the ankle fracture, which is maybe number one or number two of the common fracture in adult. And uh, there are two classifications, Weber and uh, Locke Hansen classifications. And, and the operative treatment usually prefer if the fracture is displacement 
or the patient with bimalar or trimalar fractures. Mid diagnosis can lead to a patient disability or end up with ankle arthritis. And like I said at the beginning, so you guys need to be uh, know how to make a correct diagnosis when you look into the X-ray. Okay, this is an important thing that you need to be reviewed. So thank you for your attention.